to handcuff or not to handcuff? That is the question for Fantasy Football 2017. What's going on Fantasy Football fans? I'm your host Hussein the Brain and you're watching the couch. In most cases, yes, you should handcuff. And these are my top 20 handcuffs for 2017. If you guys want more awesome tips, strategies, and videos like this one to help you crush it on draft day and in your league, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification icon. If you're in a shallow league, four man, six man league, you don't need to handcuff. If you're in an eight man league, uh, you probably don't want to. Maybe there's one guy, the guy at the top of my list, maybe you want to handcuff, but you don't really need to. In a 10-man, eh, you can handcuff. There's a couple players to handcuff. In a 12-man, I definitely would. And in deeper leagues and in best ball leagues, you have to handcuff. Let's go to my list. My number one player to handcuff is LaShawn McCoy, and with him, you want to get Jonathan Williams, who was the backups there. So it was Mike Gillisley last year. He got a good amount of carries and touchdowns, red zone carries. And before him, I think it was Carlos Williams. Those guys are long gone. And right now, the clear cut number two is Jonathan Williams, and he's pretty good. He just suffered a hamstring injury, but I believe it's very minor. Make sure you guys look that up. But he is my number one handcuff. If you own LaShawn McCoy, you have to draft Jonathan Williams. And what's awesome is Jonathan Williams is going like in round 14 or something. He's going super late. It's so easy to get him. In one of my leagues, LaShawn McCoy owner was sleeping. I got Jonathan Williams as like one of my last picks. I, I believe it was round 14 or 13, something like that. I got Jonathan Williams, awesome pick. If LaShawn McCoy goes down, who is injury prone, this is gonna be great. And let's go through the criteria real quick of what makes a good handcuff. First of all, it's gotta be a player that is very valuable almost always a running back like you can what's cool is you can actually handcuff a player like Gronkowski for example extremely valuable you can handcuff him with Dwayne Allen now that's a extreme strategy a strategy you would only want to do in very deep leagues like 16 man leagues or you want to do in best ball leagues best ball leagues it's very smart I, I believe so to draft a, a guy like Dwayne Allen in the late rounds just in case something happens to Gronk boom you got a tight end right there that's automatically gonna get you points. Another criteria to have is how injury prone is the guy that you're going to handcuff. Like LaShawn McCoy, he's a little bit injury prone. Like that's a good guy to handcuff and he's going early in the first round. LaShawn McCoy is a top four pick. It doesn't get much more valuable than that. And also another criteria to look at is how good is the backup? Is he like a clear cut number two or is he just kind of like a pass catching back or just able to do a certain set of things but maybe not a three down back if the starter goes down? How good is this guy going to be, the handcuff, the backup, how good is he gonna be on his own if the first string running back doesn't even get hurt. So for example, Jonathan Williams, I see him getting some carries on a team that's likely going to like run the ball a lot. I mean, this is all ideal, right? If, if all these happen, it would be the most ideal situation. And that's exactly what Shady and Jonathan Williams are. It's the ideal handcuff situation. Well, we got off topic from our list there. Number two, Le'Veon Bell. A guy who's got suspended for smoking uh, all this stuff a couple times it's happened. A guy who's uh, injured uh, quite a bit and for people that say he's not injury prone, uh, they don't really know what they're talking about. He is injury prone. I wouldn't say he's a major injury risk, but but he's a risk. This guy has missed games. He's also missed uh, important games. Let's not talk just fantasy. Like He's been out of playoff games. He's been out of games later in the season. He also came to the league injured and, and didn't play. And did I mention all the suspensions? Did I mention that? So he is a risk. However you want to look at it, he's a risk. And right now, like, what is he holding out still? What, what's going? I don't know if you're watching this video if he's still holding out or what. A very awkward holdout situation. I think he can't even get the money. I, I don't know. It's weird. Nonetheless, he's a risk. Handcuff him with James Conner, the rookie running back. With D'Angelo Williams gone, James Conner's gonna be there. I don't see James Conner getting a ton of touches, but 
let's assume Le'Veon Bell is healthy. I see James Conner vulturing a couple touchdowns here and there, getting some touches. Probably won't be a guy you'd want to start with Le'Veon Bell healthy, but nonetheless, if you draft Le'Veon Bell like number two overall, James Conner, you could get him in the last round. It's gonna be worth the handcuff if you're in a 10-man or 12-man league. And if you're in a deeper league, it's definitely a must handcuff. Number three, DeMarco Murray. He's set to be the workhorse again this year, but he's 29 going on 30, just a little bit injury prone. He's been much better with injuries recently since he had that big, uh, big year with the Dallas Cowboys in, I believe, 2014 it was. He's been pretty solid uh, since that game, but he is a running back. He does get a ton of carries. He got a ton of carries and a ton of snaps in 2016. So his body has gotten some wear and tear, has suffered some injuries. So there is risk there. Also, Derrick Henry is, it's his second year. He's got a decent amount of carries last year, not too many. And I see him getting a few more touches here and there. So I do love Derrick Henry. I was able to get him round 10, but most aren't fortunate enough to get him there. Like round six to get Derrick Henry. And when I say these rounds, I'm usually talking about a 12 team league. Round six to me, which is his ADP is around six, seven. I think that's too early for a handcuff, but he sometimes slips. So if you can get him round eight, round nine, like me, round 10, awesome, must handcuff if you can get him that late. But like round five is like when you're guaranteed to get him. No way, I'm drafting Derrick Henry round five. And number four is Ezekiel Elliott with this suspension looming over him. Uh, I'm not sure what's gonna happen uh, by the time you're watching this video with his six game suspension, whether it's reduced or completely going to be held off for next year, I don't know. But we have McFadden as a must handcuff for Ezekiel owners. This one could very well be number one. We just don't know for sure what's gonna be up with the suspension. It could be similar to Tom Brady how he was suspended then he wasn't and then the following year he was suspended so we're not sure yet but I do believe McFadden is going to be the starting running back and get a vast majority of the touches for the Cowboys when and if Ezekiel misses time. This is one no one's talking about here, Devontae Freeman and Tevin Coleman. This is similar to Derrick Henry's situation, but Derrick Henry for some reason is being drafted way too early. You can get Tevin Coleman around the same spot that Henry is going. I think this is a good handcuff in deeper leagues. Oh, now we're going into deep league, deeper league territory. So in a 12 man, Probably not worth handcuffing Freeman, but in a 14 man, 16 man, this could be a cool handcuff. Coleman could be a guy that you start like when Freeman is healthy. We don't know that. Like obviously Freeman is the starter, but how many snaps will he give up to Coleman? We don't know. And we have Doug Martin and Jaquiz Rogers. Jaquiz Rogers should definitely be the starter week one through three and has some really good matchup the first two weeks. Doug Martin is suspended the first three games. This is a no brainer handcuff right here, but not necessarily a handcuff. Like you can just draft Jaquiz Rogers, that's okay. I do see Doug Martin getting the starting job eventually though when he returns, he was looking really good. And ever since Lance Dunbar got injured, suffered a major injury on the Rams, we have Todd Gurley and Malcolm Brown. This is a good sneaky handcuff. I might want to do this in 12 man leagues. It depends. Like this is my handcuff rules. If I'm going to do a handcuff, if I'm going to handcuff a player uh, in, in just a regular league, not a super deep league or best ball, like a 12 man league, right? I'm only going to handcuff one player. I'm not going overboard with these handcuffs and getting like handcuffing three of my players. Okay, I won't do that. But I might handcuff one player or zero, but it's good to know these handcuffs and good to kind of rank them, value them. Like how, how valuable is this handcuff? Should I get them? I'm probably not gonna reach for them, but should I get them? Where can I get them? It's good to know these things. And Todd Gurley and Malcolm Brown is a good one because you can get Malcolm Brown for free basically, he's going undrafted. Here are some more, these are kind of stretches guys, so these are only deep leagues and best ball leagues. For David Johnson, you can go with CJ2K or maybe Andre Ellington. With Melvin Gordon, you go with Brandon Oliver. Jordan Howard, you can get Jeremy Langford. With Marshawn Lynch, I believe DeAndre Washington would be the backup there, but it would be split between him and Jalen Richard. DeAndre Washington gets a boost in non-PPR leagues, and Jalen Richard is 
pretty much not worth a draft pick at all, except in deeper leagues and PPR, in deep PPR leagues. It has to be both. It has to be a deep league and it has to be PPR. Spencer Ware and Kareem Hunt. Yes, we are really reaching now, guys. Ty Montgomery and Jamal Williams, CJ Anderson and Jamal Charles. We also have Devontae Booker in that mix. And Frank Gore and Marlon Mack. Right now, Turbin is the number two running back there, but I think Marlon Mack has a ton of potential. Frank Gore is really old and Turbin has never really been a, a good starting running back. He's I always thought of him more as a backup running back. And that's why I do like Marlon Mack as a late round draft pick. Leave a comment below and let me know if you think handcuffing a player is a good idea or is handcuffing a player a waste of a roster spot. Also make sure you guys like the video, hit that couch icon over here someplace and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll see you guys on the next video.